So when I thought about doing this topic, I was a little bit weary because I'm very much a noob when it comes to home lab stuff, when it comes to Proxmox and Portainer and Docker and all this stuff. So I don't want to do a video on this stuff and proclaim myself an expert because I'm nowhere near an expert. Like, I'm the opposite of an expert. <laughs> and I think that's the case with most things, but especially when it comes to this kind of thing, I'm not an expert. But I have been working on my home lab now for three weeks. And one of the things that I've been using a lot is Proxmox. So what I want to do today is make a video talking about what Proxmox is. Very, very surface level. We're not going to get into too many very in-depth technical details here, but for those of you who don't know what Proxmox is, I thought today I'd make a video telling you what it is. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we do, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So what is Proxmox? So, well, first, let's actually take a look at Proxmox itself. So if we take a look at my Proxmox, this is what it looks like. It is a piece of software, but it's more than that. Really, it's a Linux distribution. I know that it sounds weird to say that it's a Linux distribution, but it is, in fact, a Linux distribution, kind of. Really, it's Debian with a whole bunch of software on top of it. So at the base level, that's what it is. But what does it do? Well, the answer to that question is also actually fairly simple. It manages virtual machines and containers. That's what it does. It does a few other things that are very much virtual machine adjacent, like managing storage and LVMs and firewalls and uh, storage and all sorts of stuff like that. All of that stuff would go in towards supporting a collection of virtual machines. So you can think of this very much kind of like a uh, souped up version of vert manager or something like that and the idea here is that you install this on a machine like a, a a pc that has some ram and has a good cpu and it allows you to create virtual machines which you can then use to do all sorts of things and when i say all sorts of things i'm not being unnecessarily vague because really you can do all sorts of things in a virtual machine. You can do literally anything you want. So if I take you to one of my virtual machines, this is my main virtual machine, and it's an Ubuntu server machine, and it runs all of my NFS shares, and it runs my Plex server. That's what this one here does. It has a direct mount to my external storage, which is where all of my data is saved. And this one here serves all of my other virtual machines and my other physical computers. I have one called Docker Host that, as the name might suggest, hosts all of my Docker files. So it runs Portainer, which looks like this. And my Portainer then manages all of my Dockers. All those Dockers live on that one machine. We'll talk about Portainer again in another video. So I have Docker Host as another virtual machine. Again, that runs my Dockers. And then I have one called Jack Sparrow. We'll let the name tell you exactly what that's for. So I have, right now I have those three virtual machines and those communicate with each other through certain technologies and they communicate with my other physical machines through certain technologies. And what this has allowed me to do is basically create my own server without having to have a ton of actual physical computers. I have one and it runs all of these things. That's basically what Proxmox allows you to do. Now, there are a few downsides first and I won't really call them downsides, but these are just things that I've noticed. If you're going to do something like this, if you're going to install Proxmox, you're going to want to do it on a computer that has plenty of resources. Because you're not. if you have a computer that just has a few gigabytes of RAM or a really slow processor, or it doesn't have a like an Ethernet port so you can actually hook it, hook it up directly to your network, you're going to find yourself constrained in what you can actually do. Proxmox becomes more and more powerful with the amount of resources you have to throw at it. So currently, I have an old Xeon processor here that I, that I run in my computer and 128 gigabytes of RAM. And that's obviously a lot of RAM, but the more virtual machines and containers that I run, the more needed those types of resources are going to be. So I would say that's a downside, but really it's just something that you kind of have to keep in mind because, you know, if you're going to use Proxmox in terms of like a lot of stuff, you're going to want to have more resources than just a small container can give you. 
Another thing that I would say keep in mind is that Proxmox can work in conjunction with itself. So if you have two machines and you want to have more resources, like I just talked about, you can you can have those two machines run in concert with each other and be managed by one Proxmox UI. It allows you to basically control your entire quote unquote data center all in one place and basically what that allows you to do is that every instance of proxmox you have those things can communicate much easier than if they were separate so you can move vms from one proxmox instance to another all that stuff that all this is c considered a cluster of proxmox machines and you can then move them back and forth so i actually do have another computer if I get to the point where I'm kind of stressing this one out, which I don't think I'll ever get there, but we'll see, I can hook that computer back up and it also has Proxmox on it. I can put them in a cluster and then allow myself a little bit more breathing rooms in terms of actual resources to be used. This isn't necessarily only for people who are interested in home labs. Now, obviously there's a big enterprise focus on some of this stuff. So you can use this in an IT department, things like that. All that stuff is obviously be beyond the scope of my audience. But if you are more into trying Linux distributions, this could also be interesting for you. So if you go, if I go back to my main machine here, you can see this is Ubuntu server, but it's not only server-based distros that I can install. I can install whatever distro that I want. I can install regular Ubuntu and actually see GNOME inside of this window and use it right inside the browser. And that's basically allowing me to use whatever distro I want, you know, OpenSUSE or Arch or whatever, inside of a VM that's running on a machine that's across the room. That's really cool. Now, it has some limitations. You can pass through fairly easily a GPU, but your CPU and your motherboard have to support that technology. Not all of them do. More of the recent ones do. The older ones I found don't. So... That process is fairly easy, but again, your hardware has to support it. So one of the things that I plan on doing with this is actually creating a Windows VM, passing through the GPU that I have in my server, and that will allow me to use Windows when I absolutely have to without having to have it running all the time or on hardware or whatever. I want to do that. I also want to try to do that with Mac and see if I can't get like a VM version of a Hackintosh up and running. That sounds really cool. I've been told you can do that. That sounds really neat. I don't really need it, but it's something that I can do. So you can kind of see how, in terms of like a distro reviewer slash distro hopper you know, perspective, this could be very, very interesting. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna go into a ton of details here because there's a, it, there's a lot of stuff here like uh, talking about how to create a virtual machine how to create a container how to manage the virtual machines how to manage the containers how to manage proxmox itself all that stuff could entail multiple videos and if that's something that you're interested in seeing me do you can leave that in the comment section below but i highly recommend heading on over to learn linux tv that's where i learned all this stuff and he, he jay has done a fantastic job of taking you through 16 videos worth of Proxmox inf info going way deeper than I ever could. So I highly recommend heading over there. I'll leave that link in the video description. So if you wanna learn more about Proxmox, head on over there and take a look at that playlist because it is awesome. So Proxmox at its base isn't something that everyone obviously is going to be interested in. So I know that I'm, I've am i been talking home lab here on the channel for quite a few weeks now and I'm trying not to flood the channel with that type of stuff because i know not everybody's interested in home lab stuff but i am at the moment so that means some of my content's going to kind of be pointed in that direction but we'll try to intersperse it with some like regular linux content and i think that proxmox actually is going to help me with that because i'll be able to test some more distros inside of those virtual machines and that should be fairly interesting so it'll make it easier for me to do that kind of stuff as well so win-win for everybody so that's what Proxmox is at its very base, broadest level. It's a virtual machine manager, basically. And it obviously does a whole bunch of other stuff as well, but that's basically what it does. And it has been a very interesting learning experience for me. I've learned quite a bit about, you know, managing your network between virtual machines and SSH and all that stuff, stuff that I didn't know or at least had forgotten about. So it has been a very interesting learning experience and it's very powerful and i'm only just kind of like scraping the surface of how powerful it actually is so 
that's definitely something that I'm going to be doing as I go along. Again, if you guys want more content about Proxmox and home lab stuff, leave comments in the comment section below so I know you guys are actually interested in this. I'd really appreciate it. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. It'd really help. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. I almost forgot how to end a video. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can also find links to the PeerTube instance where I have some of my videos located, again, in the video description below. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find desk mats and hats and hoodies and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff. Again, shop.thelinuxcast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it again. You guys are awesome. So thank you so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.